Inside of today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the five best brawlers for every single game mode in Brawl Stars right now. So, especially with all of the shifts in the meta with Unbreakable Walls, there's been quite a few better brawlers to push, especially on ladders. So, before we jump into it, make sure you're using the credit code. That'd be greatly appreciated. Without further ado, let's hop into it. So, the first game mode we're going to be taking a look at is High. So, start with, we have Nita. So, of course, Nita's not strong on every single High map. She's strong on about half of them. So, that's going to be Hot Potato, Center Control, pit stop and cover crowd so these are going to be of course the maps where a little bit more grassy have a little bit more walls and nita's just going to dominate she's that perfect hybrid brawler which can counter tanks not only that get a lot of damage on the safe with her bit so next up we have brock so when the unbreakable walls were released and i saw where they were on some maps like safe zone i thought brock was going to be terrible in heist but as the meta has developed He's still really strong because of the amount of damage he can put out on any high safe with 4th Rocket and of course that incendiary uh, baseline star power now. He's just going to be the ultimate heist at Brilla, but of course on those more longer range maps like Bridge Too Far, Save Zone, Offset Heist and Kaboom Canyon. So next up in the best brawlers for heist, we have Bonnie. So Bonnie is a brawler which is actually really good everywhere, even on the maps which don't really have the range. I'd still go Bonnie on heist, mainly because all you need is one super and the star power allows you to just jump on top of the safe from so far away and you just get such guaranteed good damage uh, a lot of times so people just can't deal with a good uh, bonnie so i think it's definitely her best game mode and she can literally thrive everywhere so next up we have lola so lola is the ultimate damage brawler especially when it comes to just literally shooting the high safe when you start to get a couple of kills and you can really focus on shooting a high safe you'll just completely delete it with all of these things combined star power gear and damage so she's good on those long range maps just like brock so next up we have the king of heist in daryl and still within his meta he's a fantastic ruler especially when it comes down to the draft format he could be a really strong last pick in literally any map even on the longer range maps you can still get a lot of value out of daryl because a lot of the times they have a little bit of water you can just use your super to roll over and extend your super range so for me he's just usable everywhere especially on those more closed maps like pit stop so now we're moving on to the best brawlers for bounty starting off with mandy so mandy is strong in every single bounty map and she's literally the new queen of bounty because normally it used to be piper but now mandy outranges piper and the main reason why she's actually so strong in bounty because most people use kind of squishy sharpshooters and mandy's super can literally one shot snipe them across Cross the map hence why she's so broken so another really strong bounty brawler we have nanny so nanny has always been probably one of the best brawlers in bounty because again she'll counter a lot of the other shop shooters her super will one shot them as well and she just outranges everyone except for mandy in the game so of course nanny's gonna be really strong in this game mode but in particular the more open maps because of course nanny will struggle a little bit more when there's a lot more grass and a lot more walls involved so the best maps for her shooting star nowhere to hide and dry season so next up in the best bounty brawlers we have eve so eve is actually one of my favorite bounty brawlers right now because there's a lot of maps which people just tend to forget about eve and i just have such a high win rate with her because she's forgotten about and people underrate her massively so we're talking about of of course the maps with a lot more water on especially the power league maps right now we have canal grande of course she's gonna be really strong there shooting star also got iron standoff and nowhere to hide literally all of these maps eve is probably one of the best brawlers on the map so next up we have tick so he's actually rejoined the top five i believe it because before unbreakable walls he just used to be countered too easily by the likes of brock or any unbreakables and of course any pressure brawlers but for me it's a lot of maps in the game right now but tick still absolutely thrives on them those are going to be canal grande shooting star dry season and layer cake so if you look at the map there's some key walls where you can just sit behind no matter what and you're going to get a lot of value out of tick and lastly for bounty we have sprout so sprout again just like tick has definitely got even stronger because of his unbreakable walls and even more so on a lot of maps sprouts walls are going to be incredibly toxic there's just no way really to counter these sprout walls on some specific maps and especially maps like canal grande you just seen so much more sprout now moving on to the best brawlers in brawl starting off with max who is actually the best brawler in brawl right now i believe max is just super versatile and you can literally pair her with literally anyone and then one super can easily just give you the entire map and especially makes these really amazing plays which other brawlers just can't make in brawl Ball. especially when you combine it with the gadget you can just make so many clutch goals and so many clutch moments so for me max has to be the best brawler for brawl Ball, and she's literally good in every single map so next up we have a b so i could not put b in this list even when b wasn't meta she was literally one of the best brawlers in brawl Ball, mainly because 
a lot of tanks are played a lot of people just queue up in brutal especially with randoms and just go a tankier brutals so b is one of those brutals that can literally shut down three tanks especially on a more open map of course you can't go her literally everywhere with some of the maps right now in the game having a ton of unbreakable walls but pretty much any map you can just run b in the middle so next up we have otis so otis is a brawler of course usable in a lot of game modes right now but i think brubble is his best game mode because again you get more tanks on this game mode but not only that he's got really good range you can use him as a mid or a lane and i think you get value against literally everyone a lot of people really underestimate the range of otis but i still think he's really strong right now he's definitely one of the best brawlers in brawl so next up on the best brawlers in brawl we have crow so crow is fantastic on any map with a lot of grass but not only that just any game mode where you're kind of scared of those tanky brawlers again he's a really safe option because not only is he pretty decent against tanks or good at slowing them he's really good at countering other brawlers with his super so crow is just super versatile right now of course he's better on the more passive maps or the maps where you need scouting like penal punt for example but overall crow is just dominating in this meta and lastly for the best brawlers in brawl we have surge so surge is that carry brawler especially when you're playing with randoms Whenever I play the Surge, I just get so much value because there's always one brawler that's going to feed you. There's a lot of Buzz, there's a lot of Mortis, there's a lot of El Primo right now when I'm playing Brubble. So Surge is just going to completely delete them. And of course, he's that carry brawler. So for me, you can literally play him everywhere. So now moving on to the best brawlers in Gen Grab, starting off with Ash. So Ash is one of these brawlers that just completely dominate down the lane on a lot of maps just because you really need a hard counter to face off against him. And people don't always use the biggest hard counters to tanks in gem grab but for me he's really strong especially in a few certain maps like crystal arcade where in the lane it's just so hard to actually kill an ash unless you're really pinched by the mid and then you've got double swoosh harder at mine to name a few couple as well but ash is really strong everywhere but gem grab is going to dominate so next up we have a gene so gene still dominates in a gem grab meta and the main reason why he's so good is because he's such a good mid at also helping out his lane so especially on those grassy maps all you need is one shot to scout the enemy just even like 200 damage it'll pick them up with vision gear and then your teammates can just know where the enemies are at all times it's a really strong mechanic to have in the game right now and then of course you've got his super which his super can literally change the entire game's outcome for example say if the enemy has like nine or ten gems you've just been getting destroyed the whole game all you need to do is hit one ball on the gem carrier and you can win the game just like that so for that reason Jin is always going to be one of the best brawlers in gem grab so now moving on to janet of course janet is literally strong in every single game mode gem grab is going to be her best game mode her gadget is going to get a lot of value in so many of the gem grab maps but not only that janet's super can also change the game quite well as well so what you can do you can use your super to land on top of the gem carrier and of course kill them or just be really annoying with janet and get constant pressure the more pressure you can get on a game mode like gem grab of course the more gems your mid can pick up so janet is a fantastic brawler for that reason so next up in the best brawlers for gem grab we have spike so spike has always been that brawl ball slash gem grab brawler i think in particular in this meta he's really good so not only is he of course really strong with the vision gear his mythic gear as well is really strong against those tankier brawlers so of course you can be scared of the likes of buzz and ash but with spike it's pretty easy to take them down once you've got one super because of course he deals a lot of damage which still people underrate especially those tankier brawlers uh, but for me any map like crystal arcade acute angle and double swoosh you're just going to get so much value out of spike and lastly for gem grab we have a carl so carl of course is pretty versatile on a lot of different game modes but i think gem grab is one of his better ones alongside brubble just because of the fact that if the enemy gem carrier is somewhat weak or wasting a lot of ammo what a lot of cars like to do is just gadget straight on top of them especially if they've got super and they just can't do anything a lot of mids right now in the meta are so vulnerable to aggro brawlers but carl is the brawler that can close the gap to the mid as quickly as literally any brawler inside of a game and it's also just really strong everywhere even on the grassy maps you can just pop on the vision gear and it just becomes such a strong brawler so now we're moving on to the hot zone meta so starting off with a lou so lou is right now the best brawler in hot zone it's starting to become a really strong brawler overall right now but he's always been dominant in hot zone because his super will cover the entire area 
of a one zone and of course if the enemy wants to capture that zone they're just going to walk into it they're going to slide and just feed loot another super so of course it's going to get some guaranteed time onto that hot zone i'm thinking of maps in particular like ring of fire where you're just going to guarantee yourself some really important zone time. so next up in the best brawlers for hot zone we have meg so meg has always been really dominant in hot zone and especially those open maps like open zone dueling beetles and ring of fire she's going to be really dominant because once you cycle that super you have so much HP to be able to catch the zone. It's going to take a long time for the enemies to then get you down. But not only that, you can just cycle so quickly in a game mode like Hot Zone. So next up, we have Poco. So Poco is such an incredibly strong ruler on Hot Zone right now. So the main reason why he's so strong is because, of course, you don't want to get within his range to feed him his screeching solo. But by the time you've taken him out because you have so much HP, he's going to be able to capture so much of a zone. And even then, you might not be able to take him out because he'll be juking, trying to get into your face to, of course, charge up that super. But he's just so strong right now. You pair this with any sort of kind of aggressive ruler and he's going to get so much value in hot zone. So next up, we have Stu. So Stu has always been pretty strong in hot zone and this meta is no different. If anything, he gets even more value out of his speedstone turret because of those unbreakable walls in some of the positions well, he's always been strong in hot zone mainly because of his gas heal star power it can consistently heal up while staying on the zone and just be really hard to actually kill so of course he's going to get a lot of zone time in this game mode and lastly for hot zone we have penny so penny is probably the best in every single game mode or probably top five but it'd be a little bit boring to just put penny everywhere but i think her best game mode is hot zone mainly because of her turret especially if the opponents are trying to get onto that zone that turret can really stop them from pushing on top of the zone and she's going to get value against pretty much everyone but as i mentioned the penny turret gets the most value here so now moving on to the final game mode we have a knockout so starting off with grom so grom is incredibly toxic on knockout on bounty i thought it's a little bit better in knockout just because of his super his super will hold so much value because it has a lot of pressure just literally having a super alone can force their opponents really far back because of course one super can literally kill the entire team or at least get them really weak and hence pushing them back into spawn but grom he counters a lot of the knockout brawlers and there's so many unbreakable walls where he could just sit behind and just still be incredibly toxic so next up we have piper so piper has kind of fallen off the bounty meta a little bit but inside of knockout she still really thrives because all of these knockout maps are really nice and open for her so of course she's going to get a lot of value right here so for me piper is literally strong everywhere so you can use her pretty much every single knockout map and a lot of the times a good piper can really change the way the game goes so next up in knockout we have gus so gus is actually a brawler that's often overlooked a lot of the times but still i have such a great win rate with uh gus because of course he's got a few key features so the first one is going to be his gadget his gadget can confirm kill kills so easily his super as well pair this with literally any brawler especially when the gas starts coming in people just can't deal enough damage quickly enough so that super can be really game changing so for me gus it's one of the best brothers easily right now. So next up, we have Gene again. So just like in other game modes, Knockout is just a perfect game mode for him because he can be super passive to slowly build up your super, use the vision gear on a lot of aggressive maps, and also clump up and heal up your teammates and get a lot of value. And of course, his super can literally win you the game. As soon as you get into like a 3v2 situation in Knockout, you should win that probably 95% of the time as long as you stay together. So for me, Gene is such a crucial brawler in Knockout. And lastly, we still have it Grey. So even since for Nerf, I think he's one of the best brawlers in Knockout. Even though you can't just teleport in with everyone, you can still teleport on your own, especially if the brawler is below 3,500 HP. You can just two-tap them. So of course, that's an easily... Well, an easy confirmed kill you've also got his gadget to pull people through walls and also get kills on them but i just feel like he's such a good assassin hybrid brawler that a lot of people really underrate right now all right guys it's gonna be it for today's video i hope you enjoyed this one so let me know what you think of this type of video whether you want me to do like a showdown one slash a basket brawl and duels for basket brawl i just use like primo b a lot of the time m's uh, it's kind of just the same for basketball i always use our primo especially in the challenge and for duels i literally never play duels because these duels maps are pretty terrible you look at this map for example four lakes as well iron cove all you need to use is like barley and aggro on this map grim island is just probably eve i don't didn't, didn't even want to try that one because it looks terrible staying with four lakes just looks like eve and this one's just sharpshooters so pretty plain and simple in terms of the meta to the other modes but that's gonna be it for today's video guys i hope you enjoyed this one don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys next time